sometimes you want to split your dates. And this can have several reasons, but let's say that you have your source data in a full date format and you want only the months. Well, let's start this example by uh, getting a date. So we're gonna use the now function is now and press tab twice. And we can see it's March 15th, uh, 104 p.m. To get the 104 p.m., I need to make sure that my cell formatting is right. So let's check that. And I have this format in the date option. So that's okay. And now I really don't want this to update every minute or every time I create a new function. So I'm just gonna copy this, holding down my right mouse button on the edge, going to the right, going back. And then I have these options copy here as values only. So this is important. Now let's take a look at the functions that you can use to split the date. And the first function is the day. And the one thing I want to show you first is how uh, Excel calculates dates. If we do is day, because that is the function that we're looking for, it says serial number. And that might feel a little bit strange because where is the serial number? I just want the day, maybe, right? I just want 15 in this case. So what is a serial number? Well, you don't have to worry about that because we're just gonna click this one and then we're gonna close it and press enter and we get 15. So that's kind of strange, right? We do get 15 and it asks us for a serial number. Why is that? Well, that is because Excel stores dates as a serial number. It is actually a number. And I can show you that very fast by going to cell formatting and then get it on general. And if I press okay now, you can see this is a serial number. This is actually how Excel stores the date internally. So we have a date time combination here and Excel stores it as this number. So this number represents that date and this is a serial number. So let's do one example. If we do the month function, month, now we want to get the month. And this one also asks for a serial number. So we click that one and we close it. And now we get three. That is great because it is March 15th. So you can see that internally there is a um, serial number storage format. Let's just get it back to something we can read. So we are going to scroll down because we don't want the um, date. We want the date and time. So let's click that one. And we can also do 24 hour time if we want to, it's just formatting. So now you can see the power of storing it as a serial number because then it's really easy to create a lot of different ways to show dates and time. You can even create your own one, right? So here we go. It is uh, March 15th, uh, 1.04 PM. And now we want the year. Well, let's go through these and it's year. Again, serial number, but now we know we don't get fooled. It's 2015. We want the hour is our serial number again. 13. That is great. So what you see here is the 24 hour uh, notation. And you can change that by changing the cell formatting if you want to. Then we have minute. Minute. It's another function. And there you have the minute, four. There's no uh, leading zero. And then there is the week number, the ISO week number. And week numbers are always fun because which one do you need? Well, this one is the standard one. And if you do this on a date, then it's always uh, a good week number. It's commonly used. If you want another week number, you can do that, but I always use this one. And I'm gonna show you ISO week num. And this one actually asks for a date. So that's a little bit strange because we are just going to do that one. And we get 11. So it's week number 11. And I, it's the same thing, but I still think it's strange that all these functions ask for a serial number and this one asks for a date. It's the same thing. It's still the serial number. It doesn't ask for a date. So these functions are really nice if you want to do your own formatting. Um, and of course you can uh, copy this 
and, and use that on multiple dates and times. So these are the basic functions that you can use for splitting updates.